Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the final episode of the Resurrection series. Hey, guys, congratulations. We made it. Episode number five, final one. So before we start talking, let us begin with a word of prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much. I can only say thank you for everything. For every single thing, Lord, for your grace, for your resurrection, for the gift of you. Our Father who art in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Amen. Okay, guys. So let's recap a little. In episode one, we spoke about what the resurrection is, how it matters. And we spoke about what sort of evidence we have for Christianity, the nature of evidence. Episode two, we spoke a little bit about history, about the steps, the criteria employed by historians to find out whether a, whether a historic event has any sort of credibility. Episode three, we got into the facts, the facts that can be proved historically. Episode four, we spoke about which other theory explains all of the facts apart from the resurrection. Uh, so episode five, uh, we will just be dealing with a couple of final issues. So first issue that we want to deal with is that uh, people at this point tend to say that, you know, all of these theories combined can explain all the top, can explain all the facts. For example, someone stole the body of Jesus, attempts to give a credible explanation to the empty tomb. That uh, apart from that, the delusion theory attempts to give a little bit of explanation as to what happened to the twelve disciples. And one of the mental disorder theories attempts to what might have happened to Paul and James. But the thing is, uh, one point, any particular mental disorder theory does not accurately account for the radical conversion of people like Paul and James. Paul especially was very well educated, very popular. He was on his way to become one of the very important people in the, in the Jewish community. He has, uh, he is doing according to what he thinks the work of God by persecuting Christians. One fine day by his own testimony, he says that I saw Jesus Christ alive and I am a Christian today. He does not appear to be suffering from any of these mental disorders. And also, uh, even if we put all of this together, the probability of all of this happening at the same time is very less. You see, I toss a coin one time. The probability of me getting heads is uh, 50%. If I toss a coin two times, the probability of getting heads simultaneously decreases. Similarly, the probability of all of this happening at the same time, it's very less. And also, it just sounds ad hoc. It's just a scapegoat to people who want to deny the resurrection. And despite putting all of this together, we still do not have a good enough evidence as to why uh, Paul and James would have converted. And yeah, one last thing, do not forget to ask your skeptic friend for evidence. So as they say, they want 100% sure evidence. Don't forget to ask the same thing back. Give me the evidence as to why all of this, why I should believe that all of this happened as compared to the resurrection. So a second issue that someone, someone might bring up is the discrepancies in the gospel. You see the four gospels when it comes to the resurrection of Jesus, that particular Easter Sunday, that Easter Sunday as I can term it today, when they describe that, there are a few discrepancies. Uh, so they say that this makes the Gospels unreliable. So firstly, even if I accept, I, I mean, I obviously accept the discrepancies in the Gospels, but this just calls into question the inerrancy of the Gospels, not the historicity. Secondly, 
just because there are varying accounts that does not mean that an event did not occur take take the example of the burning of rome there are varying accounts as to how the fire started but that does not mean that the fire did not occur the crux of this particular topic is that the that the tomb of jesus was empty and disciples were claiming that they had seen jesus alive and the little little factor the little little topic surrounding this can be considered like negligible as compared to the elephant in the room that is the resurrection of jesus and lastly the discrepancies in the gospel are an attestation to the fact that these are independent sources thereby it makes them more reliable after all guys it is impossible that two people recount one event in the exact same detail that's just not possible now the third issue is that some people say only what science can prove is true i just want to make one small statement so the statement only what science can prove is true it's a philosophical statement it's not a scientific statement scientists will not be able to scientifically prove that only what science can prove is true the statement refutes itself and lastly skeptics love to bring this up the gospels are biased so even if i am to grant them this that uh, the conversion of saint paul is sufficient to prove the resurrection because he was an anti christian he was a church persecutor by his own testimony so his bias is supposed to run in the opposite direction yet he became a christian what does that tell you about what he saw and what he might have seen what does it tell you i can apply the exact same thing to james james was not a believer of jesus he didn't believe his cousin while his cousin was alive yet he became a christian his bias also ran in the opposite direction and also i do want to mention that if historians start taken by start taking bias into consideration that eliminates practically all of history also bias does not mean distortion a person can be biased and right exactly what i had mentioned in the previous episode and lastly people who take this particular uh, issue into consideration they end up committing the ad hominem fallacy so what does the ad hominem fallacy mean athena is wrong because athena is a horrible person that's the ad hominem fallacy that because a person is wrong uh, a person is a bad person whatever he says is wrong that is clearly not the case because i might be the most horrible person alive and yet if i say that the sun rises in the east that does not mean even if i'm a horrible person that does not mean that i'm wrong about the sun rising in the east and that's exactly what uh, skeptics are doing they say paul's letters are unbelievable they're not to be believed because paul became a christian first is they are forgetting that paul became a christian he was not a christian something happened that he became a christian and he says that that something is him seeing jesus alive and skeptics say well no i don't want to believe that you became a christian i'm not going to believe it, whatever you've written and one last point that's it the issue that are the issues that we will be dealing with today so we spoke about the bias of the gospels we spoke about the discrepancies in the gospel about how a combination of theories might attempt to explain uh, what happened on that particular day and about the supremacy of scientism so that's it for the resurrection theory we have covered almost all of the most popular in fact i would say we've covered all of the most popular theories that people bring up to deny the resurrection and uh, yes i do want to add this one thing that taking into context the social and the religious surroundings of jesus the resurrection is very much at home it is not something that happened out of the blue 
Jewish prophets had prophesied the coming of the Messiah, the Messiah being God incarnate for centuries. The people were expecting this Messiah to come soon. Jesus came along and he claimed to be that Messiah. He claimed divinity. He claimed to be God. And the people, and very rightfully, they asked him, why should we believe you? That's very rightful. Even I think so, because a carpenter coming along and saying, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Moses, and Jacob. You will not believe the man. They were right in asking for a proof. And the only proof that Jesus gave them, he said, kill me and three days later, I will rise from the dead. The enemies of Jesus were well aware of this. And that is why they placed Roman guards at his tomb to prevent someone from stealing the body. Nothing seemed to work. The body went missing and disciples and not just the disciples, anti-Christians, the people who hated Jesus Christ and the skeptics, the people who never had anything to do with Jesus Christ, they all began claiming that they had seen Jesus alive and they, these people were unstoppable. And that is why we say that given all of the evidence that we have, Christians have a very good reason to believe in what they are believing in. And no other religion, no other worldview will offer as much evidence as much as Christianity has. Oh, guys, please don't forget that denying something is very easy. I can deny that the Titanic ever sank. But denying it is easy, but providing evidence and alternate explanations is very difficult. Converting people is not our job. Our job is to defend our worldview. Our job is to defend Christianity, not to protect it. God does not need a protection, but he does call us to defend the, this worldview that he has given to all of us. And uh, if the skeptic still does not believe it, you cannot do anything. Don't fret. Just pray for them. We have done our job. Now the Holy Spirit will do his. I want to end with one last thing. Imagine a room in which a body lies crushed, flat as a pancake. A dozen of detectives crawl around examining the floor with magnifying glasses for any clue to the identity of a perpetrator. In the middle of, uh, of the room, next to the body, stands a large gray elephant. The detectives carefully avoid bumping into the pachyderm's legs as they crawl and never even glance at it. Over time, the detectives get frustrated with their lack of progress, but resolutely press on, looking even more closely at the floor. You see, the textbooks say the detectives must get their man, so they never consider elephants. That is exactly what the skeptics are doing when it comes to the resurrection of our Lord. Let us end with a short prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, what can we all say other than thank you? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among all women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you guys for sticking through. I had a lot of fun recording these episodes and hope you got to learn a lot from them. Please do like, share and subscribe and see you soon discussing another very important topic. Bye guys, take care.